Welcome back to Write Woman Write. I'm Donna Barker and today uh, it is my great pleasure to have from Berlin, Germany, Angelique von Lübecke. How's that? Yeah, hi, that was correct. <laughs> okay, good. I'm a classic Canadian. I can say names in French, but I can't say them in any other any other language. So, um, so Angelique is going to be talking to us today about overcoming the fear of the blank page, which even authors who have published many titles will sit down in front of that blank page and go, oh my goodness, what can I do? And the all, all manner of different concerns come up. And Angelique worked as a journalist, which she's going to tell us a little bit about, and has also written one book, which she hasn't yet published. But uh, And then we'll, once she tells her stories, we're going to go into some tips that Angelique has from her years of experience of facing blank pages pretty well every day, right, in your work? Yeah, that's true. I've been a uh, journalist for 10 plus years. I was working for TV stations and magazines and newspapers. So I was kind of working under a tight deadline and uh, under a lot of criticism right. because everybody has their own opinions, what's good, what's not good. And uh, yeah, uh, the fear of the blank page is very common, even in journalism. Mm. So. So even though you get yeah. trained, and I, yeah. So and it's not even a matter of confidence. Then would it be if the, that fear of the blank page? If you're, if you're a journalist, I'm assuming that that fear of the blank page doesn't have to do with having confidence. It has something else, or is it confidence? I think, and of course, a part of it is confidence. Um, but then as a journalist, you have like your lecturer and then another person and the editor in chief. So a couple of people are reading your article or whatever it is you write or a treatment for a short movie uh, or video. Yeah. Um, a lot of people will read that and everybody has their own opinion. So, um, I have a kind of a unique style to write, and uh, which I think is great because everybody should have their own authentic voice. But of course, if you're writing for a broad audience, like for a newspaper, that's actually not very. Um, that's not what they're looking that's for. Not they're not, they're not, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not desirable. It should be very easy, understandable. So you will have along the way and during the day a couple of people who tell you, no, this is not good. Or maybe they'll say, okay, that's great, fantastic. And then somebody just before printing will kind of cut out uh, four sentences or ten <laughs> right. or rearrange the whole article. So, um, yeah, it really is... A part is confidence, I think, and a part is a fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. There's another, um, a man I've read, um, his book, his name is William Kenauer, and he writes, um, he's, he talks about fearless writing. And one mm. thing that he refers to, and it made, you made me think of it because you're talking about when you sit down to write, you are always thinking about the people who are going to be reading it and then cutting out sentences. His belief is that if you can sit down to write and not worry about who's going to read it, then it helps with overcoming that fear and with the blank page, which you of course can't do in journalism, but for yeah. someone who's, who's doing something else. So I, I totally cut you off. I want to hear your story about, <laughs> about, um, being a journalist and, uh, and about your, your book too, that you've been working on or that you yeah. yeah, I have written uh, a fairy tale or fantasy novel. I'm at this point not very sure which of both it will kind of be. I have written it for my husband, who at that time was my boyfriend. It was our first Christmas together. And I was kind of um, going pregnant with the idea of the story in my head for a couple of weeks. And then I sat down two days before Christmas and just wrote it down in one night. And then I printed it and uh, bound it to a book yeah. and presented it to him. And uh, that's eight years back. Um, but until now, I never felt ready to let somebody else read it. Mm because it was kind of sacred to me or something in between of me and my husband. Yeah. 
But recently I read it to him and I thought, okay, I mean, this is good. Right. <laughs> I should publish this, either, you know, extend it to a full book story or maybe um, make a shorter fairy tale for adults even yeah. out of it because it has dragons and warriors and all that stuff. So yeah. it's not mainly for kids. Yeah, we'll see. You uh, this year. Before we started recording, you said something that was really intriguing, and I think it, it felt true to me as well. Uh, um, when I wrote my first when I wrote my first book, which I still haven't published, but it was you were saying that you were making all kinds of excuses for why you shouldn't publish it. Yeah, a couple of friends told me, uh, uh, and even my husband, uh, you should publish it or give it to me. I'll read it or give it to me, and I'll. Um, I'll send it to age and I was always, no, this is something in between of me and my boyfriend. I'm not so sure. I have to rewrite it. I'm not yet sure if the story is finished. So I was having all sorts of objections. But actually, deep down, I didn't want, I didn't, because in my heart, I um, felt it is good mm -hmm. and I didn't want anybody to voice anything else because then it would have been flawed. So right. I, it kind of had to marinate inside of me um, till, uh, till this point where I'm kind of ready to right. let it go, in a sense. Right. I think mm -hmm. that's a really common experience for a lot of writers. Is to yeah, learn. I believe that too, yeah. yeah. Um, so you have got tips and ideas from your experience being a journalist and this experience you've gone through. Oh, and, and, and your background as a transformational coach, right? Yeah. So you bring that training and that experience uh, into your work. So I would mm. love for you to, to, um, to tell us, the Right Woman, Right community, some of your ideas for how to overcome that fear of the blank page. And why? Like, I guess the first question is, why are we afraid of that blank page? Yeah. In a way, we are afraid of rejection, that's one. Mm -hmm. Then second, maybe a part of us believes or fears that we are not good enough, or our writing is not good enough, which kind of stems from a different part. Then we also have a fear of failure. This is all a little bit connected to each other. Mm -hmm. Most of us also have a fear of success, because what would that mean? Right? right if it would be really if we would publish we would be really successful maybe stand out in our range of family or friends yeah that's kind of yeah that fear of change fear of growth mm -hmm. all those things fear of success is one that uh is my understanding and in, in speaking to other women that that's a really particularly for women, that fear of success, not wanting to stand out and have people looking at you. And... Yeah, it's very connected to the fear of being seen, which is kind of, oh, some men also have that, but this is kind of a woman topic. Mm -hmm. Like, because uh, in the olden days, <laughs> um, as a child, like I was taught that I shouldn't stand out. Right. Like, I, I should blend in and... Yeah. I think a lot of us are doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, with the millennium generation, they don't have that, right? So, um, but um, up to a point, yeah, we want to fit in, we want to blend in, we want to please. So, all that kind of fits in there. So, then we have that blank page. And actually, we want to write some. Maybe we already have an idea or we want to you know, get the, get this book out, mm -hmm. which is kind of residing right. inside of us. Yeah. But then it is like, a, it's as if, it's, if it, as if the blank page is kind of lit from within, right? right. It's like kind of, there, there's nothing here. Mm -hmm. You want to write something? Okay, we'll see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And um, actually, there are a couple of ways to do that because this is very common. Even as a journalist, when you kind of have to deliver every day, mm. like first you have to pitch ideas, different ideas, and then you have to write in a relatively uh, short amount of time. It sounds profane, 
but it actually is the best thing is to just start writing in a sort of a automatic writing kind of way because the thing is most writers want to get it right the first time and, and even if it's yeah that's, never that's nonsense happen. yeah that's nonsense yeah. because you have kind of have to get in the flow and um and that's why I'm saying automatic writing is a good exercise mm -hmm. because with automatic writing, for those who are not familiar with it, you just start writing anything that comes, comes into your head without censoring it. And then maybe you make a small break and then you start writing whatever you want to write. So it's kind of, it, it, um, you get inside your yeah, feeling side and intuitive side, you connect with that part and not with the logical mm -hmm. fear-based center inside of you. Right. In the flow. So, yeah, you get in the flow yeah. and then the words just come out. And if they don't come out today, then it's also no worries. Then go and do something mindlessly like household task or whatever. I think the, the best thing is, uh, of, obviously I'm a good writer and during the evenings, and some people can write in the mornings or in the night, so obviously that that also play, plays a part. But maybe today, like we have moon phases, there are writing phases. Maybe today is not a good day to so do something else, and then you're while gardening or doing house other household yeah. tasks, like anything which is a little bit automated driving. Um, you'll get ideas, and oh, yeah. yeah, you will you will kind of get in, inside the knowing and feeling intuitive side, and out of the strategic, strategic fear based and, methodology. And that, pressure, and that pressure when you're yeah. sitting down and you think I have to do it now. In the writers group that I belong to, so many women talk about how clean their house gets when they have a deadline because they have <laughs> to, like, I have to do I have to mop the floor today and it's the way that yeah. you know they get out of it that doesn't work for me but when you just said driving it reminded me I I, I try not to do a lot of driving but I live an hour outside of a big city so when I have to go to the city I drive and I often get ideas when I'm driving and I guess part of that is that I'm not I'm not even trying but something will come and I'm like, oh, you know, there's a good characteristic for this character. And uh, I never put it together with, until you just said now that that's a good state to be in. And there's, there's no pressure there. So it seems to flow more easily. Yeah, we kind of, when we do such things like driving or household tasks, we kind of get in a med meditative state. Mm. So our mind gets out of the way. And then it's easier for you to get a strike of genius or whatever yeah. <laughs> light bulb, bulb goes off. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very um, important. The other thing I would like to say is sometimes writers have the idea that if they write a book, they have to write it like from the first chapter to the last. Yeah. So an another easy thing could be, okay, if one character is named Aria, so today you write something about Aria, mm -hmm. just uh, just how she looks like, where she lives, you know, such things. And yeah. later on, put the pieces together. And so you kind of get out of your way of trying to be overly perfect. Right, right. Get, it's a great idea. Good idea. Mm. The, um, do you, quick question, do you write... Um, as a someone who plans out a story or are you more of a see where the story goes kind of writer? Mm, both. Um, I do guest posting at the moment yeah. and um, um, due to my work as a journalist I'm kind of trained to first think of an overall subject and a headline <laughs> I think that that's something which I won't never get rid of. Right. So I'll probably write the headline first and the subline. So I'll um, collect that, and when I'm ready and I'm in the mood to write something, I'll start writing. And sometimes, like last week, I wanted to write something about um, pain we accumulate while meeting other people. Mm -hmm. 
like pain from other people, not our pain. Yeah. And um, I had this beautiful headline and I started writing. I, I wrote like maybe 800 words, mm -hmm. but the story is not yet there. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, I try to, um, since I'm a coach and um, healer, I try to be more in the flow and kind of, right when the mood and the feeling is there mm -hmm. it's actually a balance of keep on writing and not forcing it at the same right. time right the, uh, and letting and, and and sorry and letting go of the outcome which i think is the biggest challenge no one <laughs> of the i the, and that, that uh, one of the bits of advice that you shared with me before we spoke was around letting go of the outcome and writing something and then destroying it as, yeah. as an approach, which I just went, oh, that's like, I, I thought that sounds so hard. And then my next thought was, I have written so many words. I've, because I'm a writer in my career as well. Um, and then I do the creative writing as a hobby. I've, I've, I've written millions of words, probably like you. There are, there are hundreds of thousands of words that I haven't destroyed, but they may as well be destroyed because I've forgotten about them. I stick them in a file, I forget. So when I realized that, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe this approach of write and destroy might not be so scary. But tell me, tell me a little bit about that approach to help unblock. It's actually a, re a releasing technique um, which uh, is often combined with automatic writing. Like mm -hmm. you set a timer, you write for five or ten minutes, whatever you feel good with, and then you you don't censor it. Right. You don't you don't overthink it, and then you just um, when the timer goes off, you don't even reread it. You just take it and burn it or bury it or tear it apart, and um, kind of release it. Mm -hmm. It sounds hard, and it is in a way, but um, it helps in, like you said, letting go of the outcome. Mm -hmm. And by destroying it in a way, you're making room inside yourself for more. Yeah. It's not like you have a certain amount of words inside of you, and yeah. when they're gone, they're gone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> there's more from where that came from so it's always a good thing to um either yeah do this automatic writing and destroy it or change the perspective like do an okay maybe maybe you want to write a book but today maybe um is a good exercising day so you just sit there and think about a plant, maybe. How would it feel like to be a plant? And write uh, write something or a journal mm -hmm. um, about this plant. How does it feel? What does it think? How does it grow? You know, all that stuff. And that exercises you to see and take different parts of views inside of inside of a story. Right. And it, all all those exercises. Um, detach you from the outcome because you learn to write without overthinking it, right. and that, which I think is kind of the debt of creativity, right? Right, that's excellent advice. Very good. Something I've not tried. Um, what else? I'm trying to see. Changing uh, the place where you write. That was another thing that you had suggested. That's something that I know a lot of people in again in in the writing group that I belong to will go to a coffee shop when they can't write in their office and they find mm. that just going out to another some to another location will help them. Um how is how does has that helped you or what advice do you have around that? That's actually an advice from I have taken a creative writing course a couple of years back and uh, my teacher at that time my tutor um told me uh, told us that, that that would be a good idea for, but that was in combination of an exercise in order to change your own perspective. Hmm. And in order to, because when you're sitting in a cafe or a bistro, restaurant, somewhere where there are a lot of people, mm -hmm. you can watch 
other people and you can use this as an information for your book or for your story right. because you can uh, put all that we all have imagination but when but then when we have to sit down and describe a scene it might be difficult to kind of make it all up as we go so sometimes it's a good thing to sit in a restaurant or a cafe and to watch other people and to hear what they are talking about and to kind of weave that inside your story and later on when i learned a little bit a little bit about feng shui um i kind of noticed that it sometimes maybe our desk is not in the right mm -hmm. um position right. and and so it sometimes can help to sit somewhere else to get the energies flowing to um be more relaxed because we will kind of, if when we have a fear of a blank page or fear of rejection or whatever it is which is bugging us, mm -hmm. we will kind of combine that with our desk. So anytime we will pass that desk, we will kind of think, oh, right. I'm not so sure. That's the I don't place know. where I, I get want... afraid. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's my uh, space of frustration. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're kind of, well, what we're trying to do is kind of uh, uh, detangle that. That's from one brilliant. part, from the location, from the from the writing. Yeah, what great advice! I I've spoken to someone who's talking about um, feng shui and creativity, and mm. uh, so that will that's another one of the the videos that that's going to be available or that is available, and yeah, uh, uh, she, that she didn't mention that specific piece that you just did, which is excellent. You know, attaching those emotions to that space. Uh, mm. and how we can detach that. Her advice to me when she saw my desk, which you can't see in front of me, I have a wall of books and uh, she just looked at it and she went, oh, those are all going to fall down on you. Like, how can you work with all of that weight just about <laughs> ready to fall on top of you? And that's exactly how it feels. It's funny. It feels like this great weight. It doesn't feel like inspiration up there. It feels like a great weight. So. Last night I was looking at my desk and trying to figure out if I can just cut the whole top of it off. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's an it's an interesting it's an interesting um, how important our environment is to our creativity and our confidence and all of those all of those things that go into making us uh, comfortable and successful in getting our words down on paper. Yeah, because I mean we are energy beings, so of course um, that has that has an effect. And if if we look in direction of feng shui, uh, even to a, the turning of the desk could kind of help you to overcome some inner blockages because the energy will be free flowing. In feng shui, you talk about the power position in the room, yeah. and um, then I I think you can com can combine it with numerology. Like if you're, I'm an eight, so there are certain directions which are good for me. I, I kind of thought that was out, <laughs> kind of out there, but right. I tried it and uh, for me it worked. Like I feel more productive and energetic when I sit in a certain direction. Right. That's interesting. And it's all worth trying. Why not? Yeah, right. I mean, it there's, is. There's nothing to lose. Um, so... Your Facebook page is fabulous. There, you know, Thank so you many so people much. have Facebook. I mean, even my own right now is an, is mediocre. Yours, however, it's got such a, uh, it's so inspiring. So I'm going to share that link, um, which is right there now. Um, and I really encourage everyone to go and uh, and join or like uh, Angelique's Facebook page because truly, it's. Um, the inspiration isn't sappy, but it's and it's real. I, every 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 one of your posts, I thought, yeah, like that's that's smart and it's heart and uh, so. Oh, thank yeah, you. It's very good. <laughs> um, anything else that you'd like to share? I want to before I say thank you again. Um. I wanted to add something uh, about the good enough thing, a good enough feeling. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, everybody who writes knows J.K. Rowling, right? So right. I, so anytime you feel like something you've written is not good enough, or there will there will always be people who critique you, or some naysayers, and even in family and friend circles, the critique or naysayers might be very harsh, which is kind of a natural thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever you do, whatever you write, if you, if you and you in your heart know if it's good or not, if you're really honest with yourself, you know it. And if you feel that it is good, it is good. I mean, we are like six billion, or I don't know, seven billion people on earth. There are a lot of people out there who will like it. And even if somebody rejects you, just keep on trying. Like there is no right or wrong in there. You just have to find the right medium and go for it. Lovely. Beautiful. Yeah. It's true. And another, I, I'm a little bit repeating myself for anyone who watches all of these videos, but this idea that without dark you can't have light, uh, without heat you can't have cold. Well, without some people not loving what you're doing. You can't have the people who fall in love with what you're doing because we're all different and we need to have that contrast. Um, or it's just, it's a natural part of being that contrast. So that, is. that was a big one for, that was a huge thing for me to overcome was that, that fear that people won't like me. They'll read my book and if they don't like the book, that means they don't like me. Well, that's ridiculous. Mm. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But it's what I believed until, I don't know, until I convinced myself that that was ridiculous. So, um, all right. Well, Angelique, it is such an honor to speak to you. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you it was so much fun. Good. Um, and I look forward to uh, hearing about your fairy tale fantasy book and following that that adventure that you're you're about to embark on. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be fun. I have, yeah, I haven't yet decided if, if I'm going to self-publish it or go the traditional route. So I'm kind of so... Um, I've talked to some illustrators already, oh, wow. so I'm kind of um, looking in both ways. Oh, that's so exciting. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> is, it gonna, is it German or English? It is in uh, German, but I'm going to translate it now. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. All right. Well, thank you so very much. It was truly a thank treat to talk to you and uh, look forward to following what, where you go with your writing. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.